Today I'm going to be showing you how to find the correct door size for an opening that you might have or if you're doing a remodel to understand door sizing and also be able to install a door by the end of this because there's a lot of confusion and a lot of hard steps that can be kind of hard for the average Joe. So I think it's kind of helpful to start from the framing stage when a door is laid out. So if we look down here, we've got ourselves what would be a top and bottom plate in the framing process. So if you look at my tape measure, we'll make a three foot door or a 3-0. So usually you start by getting the edge of your door, your opening. So for a 3-0 door, you would make the opening three foot two to account for the jams and to give you enough space to shim. So that's our opening. And then you would take your square Get your mark, go an inch and a half over, do it again. This would be your king stud, this would be your trimmer. Same thing over here. So this would be the start of the opening of your door. And then the same thing would be down over here. Inch and a half. And I have trimmer and key. So that's how a door is laid out. And as far as the height of the door goes, usually trimmers or the inside stud is 81 and a half inches. So if you come over here, you see this doorway. These would be the trimmers and this would be your header. So when you have an 81 and a half inch trimmer, that would give you 83 inches after the bottom plate is cut out. And that's pretty standard for your interior doors. So we're gonna work on installing this door. So just to show you what we're working with here, we've got a two foot eight opening. So we went ahead and bought a two foot six door. And as far as the swing of the door goes, usually you want the door to swing in towards the nearest wall. And the way I like to remember it is you put your back to where the hinges are and whichever way it's swinging, like for me, it's my left hand. So this would be a left hand in swing. 2-6 door. And so let's get the door. So normally when you get a door from a door shop, it will have these stops nailed with just a hammer. They aren't sunk all the way. But we got this door from Home Depot. It was a cheap one. And they have them stapled really well. And you can see this reveal right here is very uneven and that will bother me. So we're going to take it off and redo it. So. It's in your ear. There's my pencil. Is it still going? Yeah, keep going. I lost my pencil and it was in my hat. Normally. I'll mark the outside of the door stop. Not to put it back in the same spot, but just so you can tell where you want your nails to go. That way you can hide them with the stops after and it makes a lot less work for the painter. So we're gonna pull these off. It's probably gonna take a minute, but I'll be right back. So all 
the stops had staples in them and the easiest way is just to grind them off real quick. So that door that we were on didn't end up working out because Home Depot labeled it wrong. I was second guessing myself for a lot, long time, but I wasn't wrong, they were. So we're gonna move to this closet door. So if you have a six foot level, it's probably the best size to use for installing doors. So I like to go to the side that the hinges will be on and I take my level and I've already marked out where the hinges are on my level down here here and here and you just want to see if the stud that you're going to be nailing to is plumb and so this one is perfect so we don't have to do anything with it but if it weren't, if it were out of plumb, say the wall was out like this, you would want to put a shim down on the bottom until your level was plumb. And then you could just nail your jam right to that. So that's what we get to do, no shimming. So we got our door. Let's see if it fits. You notice the jam size this is a four and nine sixteenths it fits a two by four with a layer of sheetrock on either side and if it was a two by six wall it would be a six and nine sixteenths I believe so you want to make sure you know the size of the wall that you're working with so I'm going to take 15 gauge finish nailer that's what we're going to be doing most of the nailing with. So I like to use a shim and I take it and I put it on both sides of the sheetrock. And I just make sure that the jam is flush with the sheetrock on both sides. And then if you notice my mark right here that we made earlier, I like to just go just to the inside of it so that our door stop will cover it later. And since the stud was level or plumb, I'm able to just work my way down and nail as I go. Next thing I like to check is the reveal on the top. This is a very bowed door. So what I mean by reveal is this space right here. From now on, we'll be just trying to get the whole perimeter to look exactly the same. So you can tell that right here, it's hitting. And right here, we have a gap. So I'll need to lift up this side of the jam with the shim until our reveal is the same. All the way across, like that. So, in this process, we'll be using a lot of shims. I like to get these shims off of Amazon. They're a big box of 120. It's a lot cheaper that way. We'll have a link for it on our profile. So if you take your shim, 
You notice our reveal on the top is good to go. So I take it. Get a hit. work your way around the whole door to make sure the reveal is all the same. Right here needs to go in. And if you want to look down here, this is tight right here. And the jam can't go any farther that way, which means that this hinge needs to be pulled away so that it pushes the door that way. So if we put a hinge right here, or a shim, we're going to have to hit it in because we have a nail in there. But that should pull the door this way. So you can tell now that it pulled it away, got a little bit too much gap, so we'll just stick a shim in there. Grab the hammer again. And hit it back to where it looks good. That ought to do. Gotta be careful with the waffle tip on the hammer. It's a framing hammer. Better. And before we get too far, there's one other thing you need to check. So if you close this, cut your shim from jam to jam. You have to check and make sure that your door doesn't have any kick to it. So that it lines up on the bottom of the jam too. So it looks like we're pretty straight. When you're shimming, if you have a big gap to fill, you don't want to put all of your shims in because it'll kick the jam. You kind of want to split it so that you have them even. Put two against each other.
get what you pay for, I guess. That's good. Box of opening and closing. getting there. Sometimes it's easier to nail before you shim, just so the door can be held where it needs to go and then if you need to, like I do right now, you can shim it out. So after you've got your reveal along every edge, nice and perfect, just like mine, and your flush across the drywall with your jam, and you don't have any kick to your door, and it lines up along here with flush, you can move on to the next step of nailing the stops back on if you took them off like I did and since we won't be able to fit in the closet and it's dark in there we'll just use this door over here. So I like to use an 18 gauge brad nailer to nail these stops back on but it's pretty important where they go. So if you take a look at the door here we've got the latch, the door handle and this is the hinge side. And so it's important to know, especially with paint grade, if you're stain grade doors, this isn't as important, but where you're painting and you'll be caulking, it's important to make sure you get your spacing right. So on the hinge side, I like to leave about an eighth of an inch on this side. The hinge side and then you come over to the latch side and you want to be tight and the way that you figure that where you want the tight is it's going to be kind of hard to demonstrate but you'll want to close the door and make sure you're flush across here Sometimes it's easier to use two people for this step. So you make sure you're flush right here where you want it. And then that's how you know where to put the stop on this side. So you go from an eighth of an inch, at least, over here to 
to tie it right here. And the reason you do that is because after you get paint and caulk on there, if you don't leave a gap, it'll rub and probably squeak. So once you got the top piece where you need to go, the hinge side will match that eighth inch reveal along the whole edge of the hinge side. So you'll have an eighth of an inch gap against there. And then you'll also match the latch side where it will hit, but you want that side tight, if that makes sense. And that's pretty much all for that section of installing a door. Let me know if I missed anything in the comments below, and we'll see you on the next one.